who's just joining on the spot to come up and, and do this presentation. Uh, and uh, and uh, this has been, uh, as I reported back in the fall or, or late summer, that with the advisory program at Campo Verde that uh, halfway through the year that uh, Mr. Ryan would be available to make a presentation as an update on, on how is the advisory program going and if, if any changes have been made or whatever uh, whatever he's got to report. And I, I, So again, this will be a, just a general report on it. Remember or that the there is in, in items for future consideration um, a, a a full, we're going to be doing a, an evaluation, we meaning the district and Mr. Ryan will be doing an evaluation of the advisory uh, program and then the third, second meeting in April there will be a, a, a report on that to the board. Thank you Dr. Allison, uh, Madam President, Governing Board Members, Superintendency. Uh, Ms. Brockway has joined me here this evening. Um, Amy has taken on has taken on the role of coordinating uh, advisory program for us from the teachers' perspective, uh, being classrooms, and so I'm also going to have her help us out this evening. Um, I didn't realize I was going to be promoted from principal to Johnny on the spot, but thank you for that. Um, we are going to pull up. Okay, I'm supposed to keep talking. But there will be a, um, you'll see the website that we've created, actually Ms. Broadway has created along with her um, lead teachers regarding advisory. Uh, until we get that up and running, what I'm going to talk about a little bit are the reasons why we started the program, the history of the program, where we are today and where we plan to go in the future. Um, with, you know, thanks to your support, last year we were given the ability to, to begin this program. It's a 25 minute period. Um, the minutes were taken from what we consider to be an excessively long lunch period where we wanted students to have the ability to work um, not only on their academic progress through peer tutoring and, and um, through tutoring opportunities with their teachers, but also um, to be able to work on, on growth type activities that for, for years we've always talked about the fact that we don't have enough time within our regular framework of a classroom to talk about things such as uh, study skills, self-advocacy, um, just to name a few. So when we began talking about the program, we first looked at the academic skills that we felt like students needed to build. We looked at long-term planning, goal setting, uh, study skills, organization, time management, academic responsibility. Then we started talking about the personal side of it for the students. So not just academics and not just grades and not just study habits, but also the personal side of it. Talking about financial management, self-advocacy, public public speaking skills, social emotional wellness, and personal responsibility. And then lastly, we talked about the school needs. Um, within the framework of running a high school, we have numerous programs that take time away from our core academic areas. So whether it be counseling presentations during registration season in our English classes, or whether it be a world of difference presentations through our biology classes, we we're trying to look uh, to find a way to not interrupt the academic classes themselves, but instead have it during a spe this specific time of day. So right now that time of day is um, begins directly after first hour, 8.30 in the morning until 8.55. Uh, the creation of the program, um, it, it evolved over the course of time. It evolved from com conversations with uh, the governing board, superintendency, um, the parent advisory <coughs> council on campus, the site council that I meet with on a monthly basis, um, the department chairs, um, teachers walking down the hallway, students walking down the hallway. Um, we've now created the Student Principal Council on campus uh, where we're going to be meeting frequently to discuss what are your experiences in the classroom as students. And so that's, that's where we really gather a lot of input. To be honest with you, a lot of the changes within advisory from day one of our planning and organization um, to where we finally developed for implementation came from our parent site council. Um, they're the ones that talked about aligning grade levels. Rather than having freshmen through seniors all in the same classroom, by having the grade levels to be able to create the activities specific to those uh, grade levels. And I think Ms. Brockway, when she shows you just here in, in a few minutes the presentation or the uh, website that she's created, how advantageous that is. Uh, level leads were, were determined based on their interest. 
So teachers on campus were allowed to express their interest in being a level leader in order to create the activities for freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior classes. We wanted these activities to be specific to what their individual needs were. Obviously for a senior to come in and um, have, an, have an informational session on how to use the library didn't make sense compared to a freshman coming in, how to use the resources on campus, where to find specific things, uh, align them with their counselor, align them with their administrator and their advisor seemed to really make sense for the ease of the transition. Um, all educators were given the opportunity to select the level that they would like to lead. So on our campus, every teacher was given the opportunity to say, you know what, this year I've been teaching freshmen, so I'd really like to start with fre or sophomore advisory next year. I'm familiar with many of those students. We would already have that rapport created, and I'd like to begin with that class. So the teachers or advisors on campus were allowed to select that. The students were then all brought into the auditorium, one class, one grade level at a time, and given the opportunity to select um, their top five choices for advisors they would like to have the following year. That's how we determined that the Campo Verde High School campus itself, easing into the, easing into the program to give the students a little bit more buy-in into who they were going to be with, where they have already created that, that relationship. So the students came in. Now, I'd be lying to you if I told you 100% of the students got one of their top five. But um, up to this point in time, we've actually, um, as of today when I was you know, informally talking with people, we could only come up with about 10 students that we've had to transfer in any way or move to a different area for various reasons, whether it be they didn't have students in their room with common classes, so peer tutoring wasn't helpful for them or various other reasons. Um, so 10 out of 1,820 or whatever we have right now is a pretty good ratio. So we've been very pleased with the way that worked out. Um, as we came into the school year, um, leads were working along with the advisors to create the first quarter activities. The reason we had decided, and, and really Miss Brockway, um, and I decided the first quarter to focus on that was so important because at the end of the quarter we needed to reevaluate how the activities were going and if we needed to modify or adjust. And we did. We did need to adjust. And so it was great that we didn't go through and create the entire year and then have to go back at the end of the year and change versus being able to change quarter by quarter. We've now changed some things going into third and fourth quarter that are different than what second quarter looked like. Just to give you an idea of, of the things that I'm referring to, the first two quarters were very, um, very much worksheet oriented, I guess for lack of better terms. It was, you have a handout, you talk about financial goals, and you write it on a piece of paper. Where third and fourth quarter is a little bit more conversation, learning from each other, sharing stories, um, conversing with one another on situations you may find yourself in, uh, as an example. Students seem to take to that quite a bit more. The dialogue is better, what they walk away from with. Is, um, is significantly stronger and their understanding seems to be stronger as well. So that's just one example of the adaptations that we've made going into the second semester. Uh, advisors and students have voiced their desire to have more peer tutoring and individual meeting days. The individual meetings which, which are conducted on these peer tutoring days um, essentially require the teacher and a student one at a time to sit down and look at things such as um, grades, attendance, um, talking about attitude, talking about um, how are they faring, and are they worried about anything, do they have any major tests, assignments coming up where they have worries or concerns. So what can come from that is not only a motivational tool, uh, a teacher that I met with earlier this week talked about how he has a student coming in before school once a week to check in with him and, and he goes through that individual's progress based on these one-on-one -on -one meetings and that's what's come out of it. Um, the current status obviously uh, the website Ms. Brockway is going to show uh, approximately 25 students within an advisory class, uh, the three tutoring and individual days, and then the two days of actual activities. Uh, surveys are currently being created along with um, the uh, support of the superintendency to go out to parents, students, and staff members, surveys to get feedback on exactly what they're feeling, what's going well, what do we need to adjust, what do we need to modify. As in the first year of any program, we have a lot of work to do. Uh, we put in a lot of time, we've put in a lot of effort, uh, but there's still a long way to go, and we realize that. And so some things which have been incredibly successful, um, others we need to modify and make adjustments accordingly. Um, the things that we're going to come back to you with, as Dr. Allison alluded to later in this semester, will be things such as student discipline referral data, data on attendance rates, campus GPA, 
Uh, one of the items that I'm most excited about is the number of minutes that students are actually gaining in their core academic classes because of this program. Um, the number of minutes we're able to allow them to stay in their English, science, math classes where we're not pulling them for various activities. PEP assembly is another <laughs> example of being pulled from a class or adjusting a schedule where in our current situation we don't necessarily have to do that. Uh, as well as the DFI list on a quarterly basis. Um, some difficult things to document but we will definitely discuss as the year wraps up. The number of students who connected with an adult that they can trust, number of incidents or dangerous situations reported to an advisor, which have otherwise gone unnoticed, number of friends students made through the new group of peers, uh, amount of knowledge students gained from each other, number of skills students leave the program versus what they would have gained otherwise. Those are hard things to document. Um, we have specific examples, we have specific emails that we have kept, we have specific conversational pieces as well as recorded data from incidents that have occurred and actually preventative things that have occurred as a, as a result of the relationships that have been created through this. And we're really looking forward to sharing those in April and May as we have all the data together. Uh, so what now it is essentially is any program, there must be changes, uh, strengthened and strategically placed curriculum, and everything we need to do from here on out needs to be based on the data that we pull. Um, up until now, it's been creating, created based on what we believe or what we think or what our ideas are. Now we can actually pull the data from what we've done and start making some strategic decisions. And we're excited to get to that point. Um, the, the, the mission or the vision at, at Campo Verde High School is every person every day. And we talk about every person every day, and it doesn't mean student, it doesn't mean bus driver, it doesn't mean teacher, it doesn't mean administrator or parent, it means every single person every single day. And what this program does for us is it allows us to touch every single person, it allows for every single staff member to be, to, to create that connection with students that don't otherwise have the ability to be created uh, just based on, on the curriculum being taught in typical classes. Um, this opens us up to those opportunities. And so at Campo Verde, every person every day is serious, and it's something that we take serious, and it's something that this program allows us to continue to grow and evolve into. So I'm going to turn it over to Amy, and um, she can show you a little bit of what she created, which I'm just amazed by the things she does all the time. So uh, she'll show you that. Thanks, Sharon. Um, board members, thank you so much for your flexibility. I appreciate it. Um, I'm not going to take up much of your time. I just want to give you a quick overview. Uh, we decided to use our very own virtual classroom, which the students are so familiar with. Um, and not to mention it's user friendly for me since I keep one for my classroom, so it wasn't too hard to learn a new, uh, a new program. But we decided, um, especially when we realized that we have EVIT students who leave in the morning and therefore don't have an advisory, that they didn't have access to the resources that we were providing an advisory. So the idea came about that we would provide them a place to go and uh, access these um, pieces of information and then we thought also that to allow the parents to see what we were actually doing in, in the advisory classroom would be beneficial. So the, the key thing that they're going to be using is the advisory curriculum button and we have it broken down by level and so I'll just show you an example. Um, each of the months that we since we started doing this is um, uploaded they see a calendar of the month. And so you can see kind of what Jared was referring to as far as peer tutoring being Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, with Friday being specifically a check-in day where the advisor um, calls several students over, talks about what they see on Jupiter grades, um, just kind of, hey, how's it going? Oh, I see you're, you know, got a C in this class. How can we work to make that better? And it just really allows them to touch base with them um, on a weekly basis, face-to-face, -face, which then build that relationship even more. Um, but then to the lessons, we wanted to streamline our lessons from first quarter, so we really started looking at the three overarching themes, which were finance, life skills, and either secondary options or post-secondary options, depending on if they were juniors and seniors that were looking at, get, you know, once they left high school, what could they do? And so based on the level, we have lessons in all of those areas, but they focus on a little bit different things. So here is uh, the junior level. And I can just pull up this um, example. This is what our lesson template looks like. It's, uh, this particular lesson is the cost of, of secondary or post-secondary education. Um, so the cost of college. It's just taking a minute to load there. 
So every one of our lessons is on a template that looks like this, so the teachers all get the same thing, just varies by level. And it just kind of gives the teachers instructions. And so that way, if a student missed a day or a parent wants to see what their child did in advisory that day, they can pull this up. Um, we also have attached the resources, and everything is uploaded in a PDF format so that parents don't have to worry about what programs they have at home. Um, and this is kind of trial and error from my own students saying, I can't open that PowerPoint presentation. So we were able to, uh, to save everything in a PDF format. So along with this lesson goes a cost of attendance worksheet that we handed out to kids to kind of show them, uh, let them see the numbers for themselves. So a student or a parent can print this at home. And then um, some of our lessons involve PowerPoints as well that help uh, convey the information. So for example, here is the PowerPoint that goes with that, that will lay out some of the information and we, um, with this type of information, we tap into the uh, counselors in the Career Center to um, give us those, these numbers and convey them to our students. And it also allows us to advertise some of the services we have on our campus like the Career Center and um, our fantastic Career Center coordinator, Mrs. DeMauro, who um, is so fantastic at helping our kids. So that's just a little slice of what every one of the levels every month looks like there. Uh, all the lessons are linked for them. For parents particularly, um, there's just a presentation about what is advisory and it just sort of reminds parents um, you know, why we're, we are doing what we're doing. And I'll certainly let you uh, scroll through this at your leisure, but it just sort of highlights some of the, the goals of advisory and why we're trying to, what we're trying to establish. And then we also have some, um, the advisors by level. So, they can see the list of the advisors and as Jared said that each advisor will move forward with their group of students. So a freshman advisor like Ms. Brinker will move forward with her students their sophomore, junior, and senior year and will know those students over a four-year period and those relationships that she builds will be invaluable. And then finally just a frequently asked questions, um, a list of frequently asked questions and just things that kind of we've heard over and over again that we thought it would be kind of nice to just put them in a piece of paper and, and help answer those questions. Um, one kind of cool feature, and this is how we're introducing this website to our students, is this far left-hand side, our counseling department has developed a student needs assessment, and students are able to take this survey, and what it does is it filters all of the data into counseling, and so if you can look at some of their, you know, here are some of the items, um, yes or no, are you interested in more information? And then by the way, career interests, are you interested in any of these? The counselors are actually able to pool the data and then they can customize um, invitations to students who say, uh, said they maybe had, were interested in cosmetology or in uh, being an engineer. Whenever speakers come from colleges or they get information, they're able to target those specific students and get the word out a lot more easily. So we're able to use this venue for things like that. And the nice thing also is this does not have an enrollment key, so it's pretty easy to access. We can send out the link and parents can access it right away. Um, Jared mentioned our surveys that we are working on in um, coordination with the governing board and the superintendency. And once those are finalized, they will be linked here. And when the link is sent out, uh, parents can take their survey here, students can take their survey here, and we'll be able to um, quickly access that data because it'll be put in a document much like you saw the counseling survey. And we'll be able to uh, pull that data and um, be able to manipulate it however we'd like to see what we need to see and make that pretty easy. So um, our hope is that this is a very user-friendly way to keep our families, parents, and students um, involved. And if a student needs to review a lesson, it's there for them and uh, easy to access. Any questions for me? I have a number of questions, if I may, oh, sure. and, and and I'm not sure which one, which oh, you could, could feel these. This uh, advisory online. How much of the entire advisory program would you say you've captured in the online aspects? What what benefits are available to those that are offsite to EVIT students that those that are on campus receive? The only thing that they're lacking with this is the actual face to face time with their advisor. And so every lesson that we provide to the advisor, along with every video, every PowerPoint, every handout, is linked here. So they have the information, it's just the one-on-one the -on -one that they would be missing. Um, I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that. But we've tried very hard to make it as, um, I guess, comprehensive as possible, 
uh, and that's just the one element that we can't quite capture is that face-to-face. -face. This came up in a couple advisory meetings where a few parents raised their hands and said our son or daughter for whatever reason isn't there during the second hour, uh, whether it be EBIT or whether it be a late, how can we access it, how can we get that information? There are things, PSAT prep, um, information on ACT, SAT, um, information on accessing scholarships, and so parents started to say, well, we need to be able to get to that as well, so can you can you help us out? Absolutely. And so that's, um, and, and Amy wanted to have it online, but that was one of the things that led to making sure that we had it up and running during this, this school year. So the, the concerted effort then is anything that is available in person advisory that's information based will also be captured online as well. Yes, yes. Any, anytime we show a video, say through the library, I upload it to a secure YouTube link. Um, and so I'm able to just link it. It's, it just takes the URL, I'm able to paste it in, and they can access that video. So, you know, we're not limited to, oh, we, well, we only showed it through the library. We've been able to, to translate that into something that they can actually access anywhere they have a computer. Fantastic. Um, is with regards to coming back to the number of choices, you mentioned very few students were left out in the cold as far as number of choices went. They had a list. What you say? They had one through five right. choices. No, they were given the the list. Um, they were given this list. They were given this this list, and if you were a Current freshman, you were choosing from the sophomore advisory list. So you went through the sophomore group of advisors and you selected five, not in a priority, but you selected five and said, these are the five individuals that if given a choice, I would like to have one of these five as my, as my advisor over the next three years. And so I can't give you an exact percentage on the number of students that were linked directly, uh, but it was a large percentage. Um, it was a large majority of students that we were able to give one of those five. Obviously, you have some teachers who had 1,600 students request them, and um, you weren't able to fulfill that off right. request. Right. And so you, you, you're, you, you're now going into my next question, which is follow up on that. If, you, if you'd seen any natural, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking at, any focus, if you will, or, or, or inordinate number of requests for a few individuals, and identified what is it about those individuals, what characteristics do they have that we can then broaden into all the rest of the advisors so that nobody feels, sh quote unquote, shortchanged, if you will. Well, what was interesting about it for me personally, walking into it, I thought I was going to see certain people have certain um, kids requesting them. Um, I, I just thought naturally, okay, this group of kids will request this person, this group of kids. Um, but what happens is you have so many people, I'll give you an example, there's a teacher on campus who also oversees pause for a cause. So I wasn't even thinking about the club that the teacher was affiliated with. I was thinking about the classes, I was thinking about the age group. And then the next thing you know, she had just this huge number of requests coming in from kind of sporadic kids. So we dig into it and look, well, there are all these pause for a cause kids that she meets with in the afternoons. Um, the same goes for individuals who um, teach academic decathlon, those who teach. When you spend that kind of time with a group of students, they become connected to you, and so they want to be with you more. And so, But I know exactly what you're saying in terms of identifying what the things are that these certain people have that, that draws students to them. Um, some of it is natural. Some of it is, um, I, I'm a football coach and I have 172 kids in my program. Sure. So, of course, they all want to be with me as much as they can or they want to stay away from me. But, um, but every teacher on campus, I can tell you, every teacher on campus had large groups of kids requesting them. And so that was, that was a good sign. Um, JRO, TC, those kind of connections sure. you see. What would you say that the, those connections were more based off of the perceived relationship student to advisor rather than the academic area or career focus or uh, from, a, from a more educational academic perspective, I, I want that advisor for that reason? Yeah, I, I've met with some students who said I circled all math teachers because math is my worst subject and I need to be with math teacher. That isn't a majority of them, but I've, I've heard, I've talked with students who have said that. Now I've talked with students who said if they could go back in time and select differently, 
they would have focused a little bit more on the academic piece of it versus what their three neighbors sitting next to them were choosing, which goes back to our course selections and the things that we're trying to, whether you talk about programs of study or you talk about how students are selecting their classes, the same thing goes to this. Why did they select those teachers? A lot of it is because they were trying to line up with their friends who had common classes. So, um, but, but no real data to be able to tell you this is why. Okay, and, and that's, I mean, obviously this is a relatively new program. <clears throat> it's very new for us. Sure. And, uh, and so all aspects of data mining to, that might be more than just a simple curiosity, might be uh, able to be leveraged somehow to, to better the environment. Along with that, in terms of data mining, do you have any specific empirical data on, on the program thus far to suggest, you mentioned uh, GPA improvement, do you, you have any of that collected? I know that you mentioned that you went and made changes from quarters one and two to a different focus or a slightly different uh, tack, quarters three and four. So I'm curious to know what the empirical data is from quarters one and two, what caused the change, and what we're collecting now in quarters three and four that, that's more valuable. Well, I can tell you one perfect example is simply in behavior referrals. Our behavior referrals first semester were down almost 80% from last year. But when you dig into where a majority of those behavior referrals occurred, it, they occurred in the last 25 minutes of lunch, where students had nothing to do. They were all done eating. They had 25 minutes where they are supposed to be maybe going in and getting some help or working in the library, or but reality is they have a lot of free time. And so is it a result of the advisory lessons and activities where they're learning personal responsibility and how to treat one another? Hopefully. The data is that there's been a significant difference. Is it a combination of you have less free time and you have more on task time um, and you have also these lessons backing up how you should conduct yourself during those times, all of that working together. So our, our hope is that it's both ways, that it, that's coming from both sides and that's why we're seeing that result. Um, the, the GPA piece, um, I can tell you the percentage of students with over um, with over a GPA of, when we broke it down into categories of 3.8 and above, 3.5 and above, 3.2 and 3.0, in each of those categories there are a percentage of students, the percentage is higher of students above that mark this year than last year. I can't prove to you that it's because of advisory. You know, there's no way of saying that. All I can do is show you, here's our information from this year, here's our information from last year. Do we feel like it's had an impact? Absolutely. Anytime a student I'm a prime example. When I was in high school, the extra 25 minutes of lunch, I would have been in the gym shooting baskets. I would have been um, hanging out with friends. I probably wouldn't have been in with my world studies teacher prepping for an exam that's getting ready to happen. And now students have that time where they're prepping for the exam getting ready to happen. They might be prepping with four other students. And so some people look at that and they say, oh, well, they're cheating. They're... I guarantee you that those students are sitting there learning from each other, quizzing each other, learning new skills, picking up on different concepts from the kids around them. They walk into that assessment, they're going to be more likely to be successful than if they were spending that 25 minutes doing something else. So um, can you say that's why? Absolutely not. Um, can you make an educated, you know, philosophical, theoretical guess? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. I'm really glad to see some of these positive improvements. I